Okay, this is skill practice A3, the essential pre-algebra skills that you need to know. Here we go. So we have 9.42 times 10 to the negative 1 and 94.2%. So on the left, that number is written in scientific notation. The negative 1 tells you to slide the decimal one place to the left. So you're going to have this. And then over on the right, that's just a percentage to make it into a pure decimal. Percent always means slide the decimal two places to the left. So these two are equal. So which numbers are natural? Okay, so taking a look at these, you need to remember that natural numbers are numbers that you count with, sometimes known as counting numbers. One, two, three, four, five. No decimals, no negatives, not even zero. So we've got that being natural, that being natural because it's 5 and 19. And that's that. So square root of 29 is between what pairs of consecutive integers? Square root of 29 between what pairs of consecutive integers? Well, if you look at a number line, you realize that the closest perfect square to square square root of 29 is going to be square root of 25, which is 5. And then right above it would be square root of 36, which is 6. So it's going to be between 5 and 6. Now that's the best answer, but now you need to realize that it could also fall with negative numbers because negative 5 times negative 5 gives you a 25. Most likely you're going to be fine if you just pick the positives. Moving on. All right, square root of 196, hopefully you know that 14 times 14 is 196. But then you need to realize that negative times negative also makes a positive 196. So it could be either for what you're doing uh, in pre-algebra in Virginia, you mainly just have to worry about the positive, the positive uh, square root. If they had a negative sign in front of the radical, then it would definitely want to be negative. Moving on. What is the tax amount for a $45.32 shirt that has a 5% tax? Well, you can do a translation where you're saying original cost times the tax rate. 5% of $45.32 gives you $227. Or you could use a proportion. And you could say 5% is 5 out of 100, and then something out of 32, or something out of 45, 32. And you could do the 45, 32 times 5 divided by 100, and that'll give you 227 also. We're moving on. So we have the principal amount, 3,300, your loan interest rate, and your time to pay off. I equals PRT. You just want to remember that. The interest that you're paying is you're going to multiply these three values. 3,300 times 3, this is 3.4% as a decimal, times 2. So it's 224.20. So you have to pay an extra $224.40 to borrow 3,300. All right, angle relationships at one intersection. Angles 5 and 6. Angles five and six, the only thing you can really say is that they are adjacent. They share a ray. That's it. There's no other real relationships. Um, they don't add up to 90. They don't add up to 180. So that's all you can really do. All right, for this one, volume of the pyramid. So they're giving us a pyramid, height of 12, slant height of 13. Area of the base face is 25. So big B stands for the area of the base face. So to figure out the volume, you're going to use this formula, and you're going to plug in the numbers. You could use this with Desmos. Now they gave us a slant height. We didn't need the slant height for volume. Slant height becomes important when you're figuring out surface area. Plug it in. You can let Desmos do the work. It works out to 100 cubic centimeters. We're moving on. Okay, we have our original figure that's one by one by one. Its volume is one cube, and its surface area. Well, I see three squares, so that's three squares I see, but there's also three that I don't. It's a total of six square faces, so that's the surface area. 
to figure out what happens when we multiply our length by 4. Well, let's go ahead and do that. My length was 1, now my length is 4. So you can think of it as 4 by 1 by 1. Doesn't really matter what order you have the dimensions. Your volume was 1 block, now my volume's 4 blocks. My surface area was 6. Well, now I see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 that I see, 9 that I don't see. Total of 18 squares. The big thing you need to know is if I multiplied one of the dimensions by 4, the volume also gets multiplied by 4, but not the surface area. Different set of rules for surface area. Transformations from point A to the image of A, or A prime. Well, it was at negative 2, 3. Now it's at negative 2, negative 1. The only real thing you can say is that it dropped 4 or it went down. So that's a vertical change, and translation is a slide, and it's negative 4. That means it went down 4. So it's going to be that one choice. Moving on. Okay, we're going to do some Pythagorean theorem here. So A, B, C, A are the legs, C is the hypotenuse. A and B, they give us, we need to figure out C. You use the formula, plug in what you know. So you plug in your A, you plug in your B, you work them out, you add them up. So now we have C squared equaling 1,521. If we take the square root of both of them, we'll figure out what C is. So if you take the square root of each side, you get 39 for C. Here we go to the next one. Area of this trapezoid. So this trapezoid is uh, kind of tilted on its side you want to remember that the height is always perpendicular to your two bases many kids will say this height is seven but it's not now in real life if this was a building and it was going up like this you'd say oh it's seven high but when looking at area of this figure five is the distance between the two parallel sides so that's the height so when setting this up your height is going to be 5. Your bases are the 6 and 7 because they're the two parallel sides. So you add your 6 and 7, you get 13, and then you just work it out. This is one you could use Desmos for. All right, base 1 and base 2 will always be parallel. So what is the probability of flipping a heads on a coin and rolling a number greater than 2 on a number cube? And then are these events independent or dependent? So we've got probability of heads or greater than two. So we are going to uh, figure out the probability of flipping heads on a coin. That's one out of two. There are four numbers that are greater than two on a number cube. You got three, four, five, six. So that's four numbers. Uh, you could just work this out. You could plug it in Desmos. You need to make sure you understand your fraction operation rules. It's one third. So you have a 1 in 3 chance of this happening. Are these two in events independent or dependent? They're independent. Flipping the coin has no effect on rolling the number cube. Box plots. We're going to go through this real fast. To the very left, that's your lower extreme, 13. Then the lower quartile is going to be 17. The next line, that's the median, that's going to be 18. Your upper quartile is going to be at 27. I'm sorry, 22. And then finally, your upper extreme, the very tip of the whisker, is going to be 23. Moving on. If dots are scrambled all over the place and they show no, they're not falling along any type of line, this would be no relationship at all. There's no relationship between the input and the output. Moving on. Simplifying expressions, you're going to regroup your like terms. I see some n's, I see 4n, I see negative 9n. Keep track of your negatives. 4n and negative 9n put together give you negative 5n. Negative 7 and negative 12 get together and give you negative 19. You can't do much else with this. This is simplified. If you knew what n was, you could work it out to one number and evaluate. 
Just don't forget your integer rules. Okay, is this table a function? We've got input of four, output of two, input of five, output of two, input of negative two, output of two. All of the outputs are the same, but that's okay. Now, if you had inputs being the same, giving different outputs, then there's a problem. So this is a function. Outputs are the same, but it's still a function. The domain is all your inputs. So you got your four, five, negative two. I just went ahead and listed them from least to greatest. That's your set of inputs, the domain. The range, well, it's two, two, two. Basically, you just need to list the single two. That is the set of outputs. There's only one output, two. Moving on. Okay, linear functions. This is taking an equation with two unknowns and filling in the table and doing some graphing. So we're going to go ahead and use an input of one. You could use Desmos or just try working it out in your head. Negative two times one is negative two minus three gives you negative five. One negative five. I'm going to go over here and plot that point. One negative five. I'm going to put in a negative three. Multiply these, you get six. Six minus three gives you three. Negative three, three is going to be right there. Negative four. Put in a negative four. You're going to get eight minus three, which is five. So negative four, five. There you go. Now what we're going to do is make sure that this works. You know you're doing it right when the points line up. So we're going to talk about slope now. If you look, to get from one point on the line to the next point, you go down two, right one, down two, right one, down two, right one, and so on. Your slope is down two, right one, which is basically down is a negative direction. Right is positive. Now let's look at the y-intercept. The y-intercept, it's hitting at negative 3. It's hitting the y-axis at negative 3. Now if you notice, the original equation had a negative 2 in it, and that's the same thing as our slope. Notice our equation had a constant of negative 3. Our constant is our y-intercept. That's going to come in real handy as we keep moving forward throughout the year. All right, multi-step linear equations. In this problem, you want to get all your ends on one side. You want to get your constants on the other side. So for this, I'm going to go ahead and subtract uh, 3 from both sides. And you're going to end up getting the 3's cancel out. So you're left with negative 2n on the left. And then you're subtracting the 3 and you get 24. Now I'm going to take away that n from both sides. And you get negative 2n minus n. Don't forget your integer rules. You're going to get negative 3n. These 2n's canceled out. So now we divide by negative 3, we end up getting negative 8. So when you check this, if you plug in the left side of the equation into Desmos and plug in the right side on another line, they're going to work out to the same thing. 16, that's 16 plus 3 is 19. And this is going to be basically negative 8 and 27 also give you 19. So they do work out. We have an inequality. We're going to go ahead and... Same thing as equations. We're going to solve it and then graph it. So we've got 10n minus 6 being less than or equal to 3n minus 20. So I'm going to go ahead and add 6 to both sides. I could have also subtracted 3n from both sides. It doesn't matter as long as you're doing things consistently. And we end up with this. So the 6s are gone. So now I'm going to subtract off the 3n from both sides, and we get 7n equaling negative 14. Now we solve for n. We just divide out the 7, and we get this. So you can put a solid dot and going to the left. And that is about it. I hope this helps.